So I was reading that this movie took seven years to kind of write and then finally get into production. I'm curious, what, what takes seven years? I know that you made a couple movies in that time, so that probably ate up a few minutes of your day. <laughs> well, I was ready to make it from the get-go. It's just um, finding some... Uh, initially, was at a more mainstream studio with a bigger budget. Hmm. And I can really understand <laughs> why they didn't feel like it was all that safe hmm. a bet. <laughs> um, Weirdly, during the course of that seven years, I feel like all the economics of Hollywood changed, um, where uh, the only way to make it um, was at a much lower budget. Yeah, I was very lucky in that Robert De Niro stuck with it through all this time and through the budget getting drastically drastically reduced. Um, without his kind of attitude towards it, uh, I wouldn't have been able to make it at all. Um, it's lucky that I had to write 30 drafts because about 15 to 20 of them were really on some level selling out the material <laughs> and cheapening it because <laughs> I just wanted to make it. Yeah. Um, and what it ended up being is probably closest to the first draft that I, that I had written hmm. in, in terms of spirit. So Robert De Niro has been kind of on board since the beginning. Was that, yeah, did you been. involve him in the project before even Little Fockers? Uh, yeah, way him? before it. So um, I, I'm kind of curious, you've worked with him twice now. Yeah. Is, he, is he always on? I kind of, he's so iconic, and is he this wily, aged, legendary man? Or? Yeah. Um, well, actually, I met him even before that because he was a producer on About a Boy, a film mm. that I made with my brother. And um, he was very useful to my brother and me then because we cast this young guy, uh, Nick Holt, in the movie, and uh, the studio was worried that we'd cast a depressed actor because all the first scenes we shot, the kid, the kid was depressed. Um, and then we got De Niro to look at the footage and call the studio and say, no, the kid's a good actor, leave, <laughs> leave the guys alone. Um, uh, Bob uh, is, has a great sense of humor and he's incredibly deadpan. And so for the first year of knowing him, I didn't know when he was telling a joke. <laughs> um, uh, now we kind of like poke fun at each other on the set. I mean, the thing is that, uh, and, and with this role, it's, a, it's about a guy, a guy, Paul Dano, who doesn't know his father, but whose father is kind of a mythic figure to him. So the fact that we are, have all this experience of watching De Niro do iconic roles was actually really good baggage for this film, I felt, for the viewer. Hmm. Um, there was this feeling that you kind of know this person and they're kind of this legendary figure, but you don't know what they're going to do next because the, the character in the movie is really charming, uh, but also really mean and awful. <laughs> um, and uh, I knew that in terms of the best roles that he's done, that was what he was bringing to the table. So his lifetime of work actually worked in your favor. Yeah. I, I felt that was the case. It would subconsciously work for the audience that they were seeing somebody who uh, who's one of the greatest actors of all time. Sure, and it's funny that you bring up About a Boy because I felt some sort of spiritual connection. They're not exactly tonally the same, but cool. thanks to an amazing uh, Badly Drawn Boy soundtrack once again, uh, they, they seem connected to me. Do you feel that way? Yeah, I, I do feel that way. This is almost sort of a, a next step in a progression of that. Um, this movie is about two writers, and uh, about a boy, you hear both the characters' thoughts. In this case, you're hearing both the characters' thoughts, and they're each trying to steal the story from each other. Um, and I did have a badly drawn boy who did all the music for about a boy do the music for this. Um, and I, that's just because I was listening to a lot of his music while I was shooting it. And uh, in the temporary soundtrack that I put in, I had uh, some badly drawn boy songs and some Bach music, and it really was fragmented. Like the classical stuff was attached to Bob, and the badly drawn boy was attached to Paul Dano. So what I was able to have uh, Ballad Drone Boy do was to do sort of classical versions of his melodies that then eventually would result in a song at the end of the movie. Um, so I felt it helped tie the movie together. Amazing. And um, I have to bring it up because I'm super sure. excited uh, about the fourth uh, American Pie movie that's coming up. And I'm kind of curious, you looking back, this movie that kind of made your, uh, debuted you, yeah. you know, um, brought you into the film world. What's, it, what's the legacy like looking back now and having another movie <laughs> coming out? It's pretty funny because this movie really references the first movie a lot. And I said to the guys, um, Listen, you know, I don't think anyone's going to get these in-jokes because I don't get them and I made the movie. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I went to see it and uh, there's a really good feeling to this, to the number four. Um, and, and people were actually getting all these references. I was kind of shocked. I think it, it's, it's great that it's been seven years since the last one because it has like a, an actual sort of high school reunion effect. Of, you don't wonder what people are going to look like. <laughs> you wonder if they're crazy or not. And then you're really happy when it's nice to spend time with them. Excellent. Well, it's making me warm and fuzzy. Okay, so <laughs> cool. Thank you so much. I right, really appreciate it.